So a little over a year ago, I got this kit fox sitting behind me and I was so excited because I knew I got the best deal on the internet because it was the cheapest thing I could find. Until I brought her over the shop and the guys here started taking a look at it and unfortunately, we found some surprises. Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. So today, we're gonna dig in on this and we're gonna help you guys understand that sometimes the best deal, well, it might just be the worst deal find out. So Shaggy's here today with us from Forward Arrow and he's been working on stuff like this forever and well he's been looking at it. I've seen a lot of head shaking and um, yeah so I'm a little bit worried but <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> Shaggy if you can if you can just dig in on this you know take a really close look at it uh, we wouldn't find every single problem with this because well we, we got to get it flying. I'll you got it. I'll, I'll check in with you. I'll check in with you in a little bit. So in today's video, you're going to find out what this thing is going to cost to get flying again. It is an experimental, and on an experimental airplane, there's a big difference in cost of parts versus a certified. So you guys let me know. Let me know what you think it's going to cost us to get this thing flying again. And at the end, we're going to tell you the exact numbers so you guys can make a better decision on what your next purchase could be. Hours later. All right, Shag. So, give me the details. <laughs> what all is wrong with scale one to okay. ten? Scale scale one to ten. Solid six. A solid six. <laughs> 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 well, so honestly, looking looking at the kit box, I was figuring on more of a four. So, with six, is doing like really well. So, I think uh, what I what I want to start with um, is the worst thing. What's the worst thing? You have no safeties holding your landing gear on right now. What do you mean? You can go down there by hand, take all the hardware out of your landing gear. So basically <laughs> all the landing gear, there's no safety wire. There's no- There's not a cotter pin in sight. Nothing's no, torqued. No pins, no torque, no nothing. <laughs> what is this? So we got total hours of 140 on the hobs. The hobs, if they were new, if that meter was new when it was put in, it flew 140 hours. And if you look at the airplane, you can tell it flew at least 140 hours, maybe more. And there is a slight issue we're trying to figure out. We don't know yet, but uh, that means there was at least 140 hours flown without properly um, torqued and or safety wired and or pinned and or something, the whole landing gear. Now we were talking about that other little option that this thing has. That's true. Maybe. I, I just talked to someone who used to own this that didn't fly it, but used to own it. It went through a few people's hands before I got it. And it just so happens that it has a set of inflatable floats. I'm constantly searching the internet for new deals, just like this kit fox behind me. And being protected on the internet is absolutely so important. Data brokers make a ton of money selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you, like even where you live. And that's why I'm super excited to talk to you about our sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your personal info. They can submit an opt-out request on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to. The catch is they make it super hard to do. Let Aura handle that for you. And the cool thing is you can try Aura absolutely free for two weeks by using my link down below. The best part about Aura is it does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats. You don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, and even identity theft insurance, and so much more. You get everything in one affordable place. The feature that I've come to like the most is Aura's secure password management. I have hundreds if not thousands of passwords that I want to make sure are super secure, and Aura easily handles that right within the app. I also like Aura's VPN feature. It's top notch, so if you ever decide to hop on public Wi-Fi, you can be rest assured that you're on a secured connection. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. Just like I gotta focus on this kit fox behind me. 
So look, you can either let people continue to exploit you and your family and make money off of your private information, or you can go to Aura.com slash Rebuild Rescue to start your two-week free trial. You can also click the link right down below in the description and get started today. There was something else too that this thing actually has. Could you show us that? There's provisions in the back and until I went, started going through some boxes, I wasn't positive what it is. Once upon a time, this thing had a parachute. So there's provisions for this little Kit Fox 1. Now this is serial number 50 and it's a 1. So this is the 50th Kit Fox ever built according to the serial numbers from the manufacturer. We have all the paperwork. Um, and back then, it had a parachute. Here, I thought that was Cirrus was like the first one to parachute. Well, it, no, the experimentals. I know they've they've been doing it for a while. For uh, a while. I was I was shocked that this whole thing happened. Yeah, so we can throw a parachute in here, and I think uh, that might be a good idea to put a parachute in. Maybe some work, but we could do it. Yeah, that is actually really cool. So if you guys look, all these straps here, which we were trying to figure out what these straps were, they're literally built into the side of this. It wraps around the whole airframe. It's going up underneath here to the front points. And it looks like the parachute would literally blow this panel out. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. However you release it, I'm not sure how that works. Usually there's, like a Cirrus, there's a rocket and it just... Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna put a rocket powered parachute <laughs> on uh, on the Kit Fox here and uh, it should let it fall down at maybe 20, 30 miles an hour. Wonder, how do you test that? Can you like test it? Can you just fly and? We go to the hobby store and just get a couple really powerful model rockets. Yeah, so we, so we got a parachute <laughs> for this. I think we're gonna have to put it on just cause it'd be pretty cool. Um, you know, and just in case I fly it, cause I might need one. Oh my gosh. Yes. So those are the two things that were like pretty cool. Um, you know, that, that you came across. So why don't we just start back here? Let's go down through your list and let's see what all we have to fix before this thing will fly. So there's a couple service advisories back here. There's a weldment back on the horizontal stabilizer that there's a gusset that has to break it up. Greg was saying he feels like it's already been done. Um, oh, okay, yeah, there so, is, so that's done already. That's already been complied with. Okay. There's a couple more things that we got to go over service advisory wise, but just given a an overview of what's going on here your lt batteries have expired which go figure she's been sitting how many years how old are they 2013 i think 2013 they were expired okay so, so um and that's one thing when you get a cheap airplane chances are you're not going to get much information on it <laughs> which includes like how, when was the last time it was touched or someone and that's a good indicator you look at the elt batteries you see what the data is on them uh, depending on if they're two, three, four, five year batteries, that two, should tell you about two to five years. Yeah. Roughly. That, should, that should tell you about when it was replaced last. So if someone at least attempted to work on it in, or in and around 2012, 2011, which is how many years? A lot. But. <laughs> All right. So next up, your flapper on, your mixer down here, you can see things are just dancing, weeble wobbling. We'll have to look this over. What, what term is up. that? This is a flapper on. No, I meant like what, oh, it's, down what here? they're doing. I'm calling a mixer. They're flipping and flopping and they're jiggling flipping and, and flopping joggling and, and, and dancing. Doing, they're all doing all kinds of weird stuff down there. That's not a, oh my God, but pull yours. I was getting yeah. this to rub right here. Yeah, so if, if you look down there, and this is um, the whole uh, cabling and push rod assembly on these things is, it's, it's really cool you know, because it's made for the wings to fold back for when you want to transport it, right? Um, but that also makes it a lot more advanced because all that stuff has to articulate to allow it to do that, um, which makes things uh, a lot more difficult back here. Yeah, I was getting this one to rub right here on the fuselage too. So that's not good. <laughs> Is that all the way down or does it go down further? It might not be hitting a stop. I, I forgot, these are flapperons you know, which is actually an aileron and the flaps mixed into one, which I still don't completely understand. I have to spend some time with it to kind of figure that out, but effectively right or left, it's going to change, uh, you know, the pitch as an aileron. But then when you grab the flaps, both of them are going to move like a flap, which is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, rubbing is definitely not good in, in this respect. And it's rubbing with a full right uh, deflection. And 
the flaps are actually up at this point. Nah, so that that should be an easy easy enough fix. Nothing really feels loose as far as flight controls go. So okay, it maybe fixing the mixer assembly might solve that. Maybe not. We're gonna fix this wiring, and just this is a personal pet peeve of mine. Yeah, absolutely. Tidy, tidy up a little bit. Any wiring, um, anything that's hooked to a wire that's loose for one, and any wiring that is not tied up correctly. Um, I'm a fan of of the heat shrink uh, connectors instead of these older type connectors. Uh, they're just a lot more, uh, a lot better of a connection. And I think in this atmosphere with all the vibration, I think that'll be a, a better, I, th I think we change them all. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, cockpit wise, didn't really find anything. The top two brake master cylinders, if you look down there, there's bolts going through there, no safety on there. There's no cotter pins. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's no cotter pins at all in there. Um, more wiring mess. We're gonna have to figure out a way to secure your battery. Which the top of the lid is on my toolbox, so it might just be something like that. Um, yeah, maybe pin the lid or, yep. or strap and pin it. Yep. Um, you were saying that when you went did your look over, the second ignition system was not operating, so we'll have to dive deep into that. Right. Find yeah. any information I, so on that yet. On this engine, what I noticed, it is a 532. We have all the information on it. Um, and I may be, I might be wrong. I know the last video, there's there was a ton of you guys um, that put comments in there about this engine. You definitely know this engine way better than I do. And I did, and I have a huge, a huge, uh, admittance here that I did originally in my haste while being excited to get this started I thought this was the reservoir for the oil injection and I'm gonna grab some oil and put some two-stroke oil in there I did cut that out of the video because it is not so this is actually the lubrication for the rotary valve in a Rotax um, I have a ton of experience with two strokes I'm a little embarrassed, I have to admit, because I should have known that. But uh, but this airplane does not, some of these do have a premix on, uh, a circuit for that with its own tank. This one doesn't have it. You have to premix it, um, you know, in the tanks. Did notice that before we had any blow up or any major issues and stuff like that, but didn't put that in the video. So I do appreciate when you guys see something that's not right and you let me know. But yeah, so we do need two stroke in here for a premix. It does have an aftermarket cylinder head on it. It is called a DIC um, <laughs> cylinder head, um, which makes it a twin plug. And this, uh, these other coils were added to it. It looks like um, it, it's just a different type of coil. There's a, a spaghetti mess of wiring. I don't know if that there was something added in the engine. We're gonna have to pull the engine off, look at the ignition system, make sure it's set up perfectly. And I have seen a bunch of different upgraded ignitions you can get for them for the twin plug. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, or I've also been talking to a company and I'm not gonna say the who, what's or when, but that builds a whole different engine assembly for this that is a four stroke. And it does have, I think another 20 some horsepower over this one. LS. So, Texas speed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not LS swapping the Kit Fox, although, what it, uh, no, I don't think it's going to hold it, but... Um, not, a, not a chance. She'd be like this the whole time. But, but, but if it was up to Shag, we'd hardly swap it. So oh, not yeah. doing that. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. That not doing, be. I don't have enough She'd oil. She'd really shake herself to pieces then. <laughs> yeah. Well lubricated. <laughs> aren't they, they're dry sump too, aren't they? Yeah. Most of them are dry sump. Well, it's dry sump-ish. Sort of, kind of that's dry sump-ish. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so coils, that, that secondary spark is not secondary sparking it's yeah she's just there for show so what else do we got up here uh so we got a fuel line the, the quick disconnect going to the left hand fuel tank we're gonna have to sort that out uh what else did we come across pretty much all the lines all these rubber hoses They're up just here old. No, just old yeah um and then your right ears i saw like this fuel line here i mean i mean you can see it so it, it's nice you can tell there's fuel in there but personally i'd like to know what kind of fuel line this is and it doesn't, to me, it doesn't look like something that you should be flying with, honestly. Uh, it kind of looks like Tigon. Yeah. Greg, what would you say about that? It looks like Tigon to me. What do you think? So this fuel line here. 
Definitely gonna replace it because it's gonna be old and we don't know the date of it. It's off the lawnmower. But yeah, this is like a lawnmower fuel line, right? That's, that's what it looks like that's to me. Acceptable. Experimental, baby. Experimental. <laughs> um, so basically this is built from uh, Home Depot, uh, HD Aerospace, you got to say it with a little elegance. HD Aerospace, <laughs> right. Um, and, uh, and your local snowmobile power sports store. Um, yeah. And this is the 50th one, so it literally kind of is. They said we're trying to figure it out. Yeah. Your radiator right hand mounts cracked. Is this, now, I do have to ask, guys, is this a radiator or is it a radiator? That's an air to liquid heat exchanger. There Ooh. we go. There we go, went air college. liquid heat <laughs> I like it, I like um, it. So the gearbox, there's also a service bolting out. Not sure if this one falls in or not. We'll have to look into it a little deeper. Uh, I'll have to see if this is in compliance with that. And also there's a two year recommendation on changing the oil on these, so. Now, so one of the differences too, and I just learned this, we were just off camera, we were talking about experimental and I'm telling you, I'm loving the experimental more and more and more because you can, you can just do so many different things and with this gearbox, it wouldn't have an AD, an airworthiness directive on an experimental, it would be an advisory. So the FAA takes a little different stance on these experimentals where it's experimental. So, you know, they don't issue ADs for them, they, they have advisories. So you have to, there's, you know, Kitfox has come out with, and we have a list of them mm -hmm. in that we got with, with, with some of the information from this airplane of different advisories. Uh, from like a number of years ago, but it's really cool because you just, you can you can do so much more. I, I really think we're gonna have to get another experimental something because I, I, I kind of really like it. And then, so this one here, every two years, change the fluid, you're gonna wanna take a look at the fluid, make sure there's no metal in it, scope it, um, you know, and, and, and just make sure it's good. I mean, because obviously if, if this isn't turning, this isn't turning and you're not flying. So, so what else we got? That's pretty much it. What if, so uh, one question I that did a prop. Prop needs to look is, is the prop here. So yeah, if we look at this prop right here. I think, yeah, it's one closest to me. I don't know if this is just a split in the coating. Uh, obviously the best way to figure that out is to send the prop out to, to the, you know, the, the company that made it as long as they're still in existence. Look at having this leading edge ero erosion, this tape to replace yeah. while it's out. What do you guys think of wooden props on something like this? And what do you guys think about wooden props on this? Put something in the comments. I mean, would you, would you fly a wooden prop airplane like today? And what's it made of, like ash or something? Or This one's not adjustable, is it? No. The one on the uh, Starlight down there is similar size and it's adjustable. So, so definitely we're going to send this out to the company or replace it. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, I don't know if you had a chance to look, but what is the recommended uh, overhaul time of this Rotex? I haven't gotten into the Rotex manual just yet. I need to go. Five need... years ago. Yeah, five <laughs> years ago and about 100 hours ago. Now, so I think if I remember correctly, I think it's somewhere in the 200, 300 hours with one of these Rotexes that you have to, uh, you have to overhaul them. And just knowing two strokes, I mean, they wear themselves out pretty darn quick. I mean, these, the rings are going to get weak and they love the run. It's going to want some crankshaft bearings and, uh, you know, and stuff like that. You know, the other thing I keep looking at just, uh, all the, uh, two stroke race engines I used to work on. We used to build custom How pipes ugly with, your tune pipe with is? Oh yeah. <laughs> like a tune pipe. Nice FMF fatty. On yeah. This I thing. think oh. this thing, <laughs> this thing needs, cool. yeah, this thing needs a real tune pipe. I mean, I can't believe that's at least I'll bet you on this 10 horsepower. There is also a company that I saw online. Um, they created a 800cc four stroke that they mounted on, I think it was a Kit Fox 2 is what they designed it for. And they have a firewall forward kit for it. Electric start fuel injection um, with a belt drive. It's like this huge cogged belt, like a helicopter that they have on it with like a bearing plate, uh, jack shaft kind of deal. That'd be sweet. Dual fuel pumps four stroke, no oil mix in, and they don't sell overhaul kits because you just take the engine off and for about 4,500 bucks, you get a whole new engine. After like, I think it's an 800 or a thousand hour, I think it was a thousand hour. I'll have to look at it, but. I know I, the newer kit, kit boxes have all kinds of fun stuff for them. Yeah. One of the coolest things about getting a cheap airplane is it's cheap, but it usually comes with some caveats. This one here, we got a box of parts with a box in it, 
and he found some really cool stuff. Let me show you. Dual carb kit, 269 bucks. You can't get that anymore. <laughs> July 1991. All right, so when you guys get a cheap airplane, number one thing you want to look for is what? Logbooks. Without logbooks, you guys know, even like the 401, man, it makes things difficult. You know, we, we bought this one sight unseen. We did know the person who had it, but we didn't know the people who had it before that person and before that person. So it did come with logbooks. We got our aircraft logbook, original builder. It was purchased in 1986. And uh, so we, and we got the engine logbook. We got the propeller logbook. We have so much information on this Kit Fox from way back when it was built. We have all the receipts and this kit brand new was $8,000. Yeah, so, you know, back in 86, which I don't know what that computes to now as far as, you know, value. Well, I mean, what would that be? With know. inflation and everything else, gosh. I mean, still a good amount of money back then. You know, we got the amateur built aircraft service and maintenance manual. I don't know what year it is. I've, there's probably a couple updates. This is it's probably a little updated. 1983 aircraft, <laughs> Experimental Aircraft Association. Um, it's got all kinds of uh, build data in it. Uh, we got weight and balance. So this is the literal CAD, not CAD, but drafting. Yeah, like blueprint. Drawings, blueprints of that engine. And if you notice, well, they're in a line there, but it's only got uh, one spark plug per cylinder and the coil is like mounted right over with this stuff. So that's a little bit different. That, that was definitely an aftermarket head. Um, yeah, really cool. I think we're going to frame this. We got everything we need. So we do have a ton of work to do to it. And, uh, you know, just to bring it up to date. All right, so Greg spent the better part of the day with Shaggy looking over the kit fox, finding all the problems and well, he put together a price list to tell us what this is gonna cost us to get everything right and to get it back up in the air again. So how bad is it? <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Come on. Set it on fire. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, it needs some work. Yeah. Uh, you know, Shag went through it pretty good. I saw some of the stuff. So just to let you guys know, when we pulled this into the airport on a trailer, Greg came out of his tea hanger behind us like pretty quickly. So we stopped and we're like, hey, what's going on? The first thing that Greg said is, when can I fly it? So Greg, he actually no, said- No, I said, is this another piece of junk is what well, I said. Well, I mean, after he said that, <laughs> he said, when can we fly it? So um, he actually said he is more than happy to be the test pilot. He said, we have to move a couple things around because his feet don't quite fit, uh, which we will. but. But Greg went over this with a fine tooth comb and I was kind of wondering why. And then I remembered, you're, you said you'd be the test fly. pilot I'm for fly. Yeah, so right. definitely rather you than me. I have a list right here and what it looks like, it looks like we got about 28 hours of work, which isn't bad at all. I mean, it's, it's a small airplane. I mean, it's a lot different. There's a lot less to it um, <laughs> than one of the PA-28s. Definitely than the Saratoga and absolutely more than the 401. So the 401 is like a whole nother level, but yeah. Um, so 28 hours, which isn't bad, $110 no. an hour. And most, of it's, most of it's small stuff, you know, an hour yeah. here, hour there. Simple stuff. There, yep. So there was no big nasty surprises that were found. And that's the no. biggest thing that I was worried yep. about. You know, airframe, you know, problems, rust or corrosion, nothing like that. You know, it's a smaller airplane, so it's easy to store it inside. So this thing's been stored inside, I guarantee it's whole That life. helped it a lot. Absolutely, a lot. absolutely. And so it, it looks like the biggest cost is really gonna be the engine overhaul and the prop. I mean, this is an old wooden prop. We see how it has a little bit of separating. So we wouldn't try to overhaul it, you'd replace no. it. That's gonna run right around $6,000. But you showed me actually, and I have it right here, an Aeromarine LSA, Aeromarine V-Twin, which is a 60 horsepower liquid cooled four stroke, fuel injected, electric start. It's like brand new technology. Well, they came out with, in 2020, they came out with a firewall forward kit for this that I believe cost around $10,000. I'd rather spend the extra $4,000 and have a fuel injected like non yeah, sure. two stroke, sure. like and a you're, you're going to have that into you know you have the engine overhaul which is what forty two hundred dollars yeah. and just little stuff that's going to nitpick yes. you rubber boots for the carburetors you know absolutely we have the issue inside where the two cables meet one is interfering with your foot yeah so by the time you add all that stuff fixing the prop absolutely you're going to be close to that well anyway. and then we also have the ignition issues yep. only one uh one one set of plugs works 
on the ignition right now, so that would need fixed. We would need to clean up all this exhaust. That's $10,000 of brand new equipment. Take this, throw it in the corner, yep. slap it on the front. That's an engine mount, that's fuel pumps, that's your prop, carbon fiber ground adjustable prop. This isn't ground adjustable, no. and hey, I think a V-twin with some nice pipes is gonna sound so, a lot better yep. than a snowmobile engine. Not that I don't like snowmobile engines, but this is a little 532 cc. Uh, I, I think we gotta try to go the V-twin route, so we're gonna have to get a hold of them, yes, see if definitely. we can't get an engine for this thing, and I think we're gonna go ahead, slap one of those on, do the other few little things which I'm really floored by. It really isn't that much stuff. And I did talk to iLevel. If you guys haven't checked out their stuff, they have the bomb, which is, it's this device that hooks onto the wing and, or when well, you hook it onto a, a, a bunch of different places, it is all self-contained. It's, it's got a heated pedo in it. Mm -hmm. It's got its own power source and it'll transfer all of your data right to an iPad. You could literally take every gauge off the front, have two of those, you'd have backup and put it right in your panel and you have everything to fly. Airspeed, altitude, gives you a climb, gives you angle of attack. They have a bunch of other devices and I did talk to them out at Oshkosh. So I'm thinking we might end up with some flush mount iPad and a couple other things in this panel with, uh, with one of those bombs that would stay right on this. And I think we're gonna go ahead and get that, uh, that V-twin four stroke on here. So all in all, paid $9,000 for this. How was my buy? Was it a good buy? Was it a bad buy? Horrible. It was a horrible buy, horrible, horrible buy. I lose money on it. <laughs> That's aviation. It's aviation, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> so really I think we'd have, uh, it, with a new engine uh, and what we paid for it, we'll probably have about 20-ish thousand in it, I think. Yeah. Maybe 22, yeah. 23 with the panel stuff, maybe 24. So 24,000 in this with a brand new engine firewall forward and really at that point, it'd be a brand new panel. Mm -hmm. Is that a good deal? I mean, what do you guys think? Is that a good deal? Would you pay for it? Would you pay 20 some thousand for a kit Fox with a brand new engine and a brand new panel? I think it's a good deal. It's pretty close to what it's worth. So. Yeah, I think it's a good deal. And I don't think you're gonna buy one like that on the market with a fresh engine and fresh panel. Who would want to? In 20 some thousand a while, <laughs> this is true too. So um, yeah, so guys, thank you so much for coming along. As always, make sure you like the videos, subscribe, turn on notification, and don't forget to check in with us. Thank you so much for being here. Take care. Hey, Greg, can you sit up straight in there? No. I think we're gonna have to bubble, bubble the top of there for your head. Take this out. There we go. Now, how are you in there? Oh, that's pretty good. That that's not bad. Good. And you're, how tall are you? You're like six foot, right? It's like 6'2". No, I think that'd be well, like Well, I know. Really I was 6'2 when I was younger. I might be shrinking. Yeah, I shrunk half an inch, so. No, and your feet, I mean, your feet fit in there. It is oh, close the bolts, to the throttle the cable. Come out of the back, too. That whole elevator is all tight. Oh, okay. That uh, need, well, I'm pretty, I'm I think everything, sure, everything needs sure greased up. and yeah. yeah, like everything's definitely going to need like greased up and all that stuff. But Yeah, I'd fly this thing. It's probably fun to fly. All right, let's go fly it.